Can you guess which were the five most popular videos uploaded to this channel during 2020? Well, you don't have to guess because I'm going to tell you. Coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. Thanks for joining me today. A very happy new year to all of you. I love model railroading and I love to create videos about the hobby. To me, creating these videos is a great way to share the hobby. In 2020, I uploaded a bunch of videos. Naturally, you all watch some of them more often than others. I'm going to show you short clips from each of the five most popular videos uploaded during 2020. And after you've watched the clips, I'd like you to go down to the comment section and tell me which video was your favorite one. But perhaps your favorite video in 2020 isn't one of these five. Perhaps it's one of the many other videos I uploaded during the year. You decide. And to help you decide, I'm going to put a link to my videos page down below. I'm asking you to tell me which was your favorite video uploaded in 2020 so that I can try to bring you similar content in 2021. All right, let's get started with the video in the number five spot on the top five list. And video number five is Operations, Andy's Ethanol Train. In this video, my friend Andy Henley dispatches an ethanol train from his layout to my layout. As the train crosses my layout, it delivers two tank cars at Crown Oil and Gas. This joint video is a wonderful way to collaborate in the hobby. And the train is ready to depart for the Evanston subdivision. Here again is Andy's train on my layout. It is sitting on track one in staging. That track represents the off layout destination of Cheyenne, Wyoming. As I said before, the train originated in Indiana and it's now headed to the San Francisco Bay Area. It features the same locomotives and buffer cars that Andy dispatched, but otherwise some of the cars in the consist have changed as a result of drop-offs and pickups along the way. The ethanol train is now departing westbound. The NW2 shoves the two tank cars onto Crown Track 1 where they will be unloaded. Up next, the video ranking in the number 4 position, Evanston Renovation 15, Small Space, Big Roundhouse. In this video, I ask, how can you create the illusion of a large roundhouse in a small space on your layout? I show you how I did it in hope that the techniques I used will be useful to you as you build structures for your layout. Now then, this is the prototype of the roundhouse at Evanston. The Union Pacific Railroad built this brick structure in 1912 to replace an earlier wooden roundhouse. I am trying to capture the feel of it on my layout. This is what it looks like now that it's done. I'm happy with it now and I'm happy to be able to share it with you. And how could I replicate or at least capture the feel of the prototype in a space that measures only four inches wide at its widest point and narrows down to two inches? That's not a lot of space, even in end scale. There was only one way, by using forced perspective to make it look like it's bigger than it really is on my layout. By trying to create an illusion of the prototype, by combining selected pieces of a Walters Roundhouse kit with sheet and strip styrene and with photos of the prototype. That's how. Next, in position number three, Evanston Renovation 7, Wiring the Yard. 
In this episode of our Evanston renovation series, I wire the yard tracks on this part of my layout. Many people say they don't like to do wiring, but it can be a satisfying task when it's done well and everything works the way you want it to. Wiring is a task that many people say they don't like doing. Well, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be an odious task. You might even find it to be satisfying when it's well done and everything works the way you want it to. This is the area that we are going to wire. It consists of five yard tracks at Evanston. This is what the yard looks like with no wires laying around on top of the layout. What a difference. Next, I'm going to install drop feeders on each of the five yard tracks. Cato calls its drop feeders terminal unit joiners. Like any other brand of drop feeders, they bring power to the track. Under the layout, I connect the feeder wires to terminal barrier strips and layout bus wires are also connected to the barrier strips. I like this method far better than using suitcase connectors or soldering the drop feeders directly to the bus wires. Everything is working just fine. In position number two, what's a model railroader doing in Panama? Over the years, many of you have asked me why I live in Panama. In this video, I tell you what brought me here in May of 1990 and why I'm still here more than 30 years later. We also stopped by my train room during the video. As a retired military officer, I could live just about anywhere, even in my beloved central Pennsylvania, but instead I live in Panama City, Panama. Why Panama, you may be asking? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you what brought me here in May of 1990 and why I'm still here more than 30 years later. Okay, let's go. You may be wondering why I'm down here. Well, the U.S. Army brought me here in 1990 for the last assignment of my military career. In late 1991, I retired from the Army and have been living down here ever since. And in 1994, I married a Panamanian lady and we live in what used to be a U.S. Air Force base in what used to be the U.S. Canal Zone. Let me also assure you that I have all the comforts of home down here uh, with an important exception. And that exception is there are no train stores, train clubs, or train shows here. And so far as I know, I'm the only model railroader in the whole country. And now my layout. This is what you see when you arrive at the door of my train room here in Panama. In fact, my train room is a spare bedroom that measures only 10 feet by 12 feet. So my layout's not very big, but it keeps me busy and it keeps me happy. It's a modern era and scale layout set in southwestern Wyoming and northeastern Utah. And finally, in position number one, are you ready for this? The most watched video in 2020, automatic reversers on the main line. In this video, I install an automatic reverser on the main line of my layout. I explain why the configuration of my track plan requires me to install an auto reverser on a particular segment of the main line. First, I install a Digitrax AR1, but I'm not totally satisfied with it. So I replace it with an NCE AR10. The AR10 does what I need it to do and does it perfectly. Well, we model railroaders are a persistent bunch. So as I'm about to show you, I bought and installed a new AR1. As you will see, this new AR1 did reverse the polarity in the section of the mainline track, but it did not function to my total satisfaction. So later on, I replaced it with an NCE AR10. Here's the new AR1 installed. As I made these changes in the track, I inserted insulated rail joiners here at points A and B, effectively isolating the section of track between them. The track between points A and B is 14 feet long, and that's far longer than the longest trains that I run on my layout. There, it's all wired up. 
Let's try it out. Did you see the momentary hesitation as the locomotives pass over the insulated rail joiners? It may be possible to fix this problem by repeatedly adjusting the tunable trip current knob on the AR1. I certainly tried to do this repeatedly, but I couldn't get it to work perfectly. So I replaced the Digitrax AR1 with an NCE AR10. Unlike the Digitrax AR1, the, the NCE AR10 has a solid state design that provides silent operation. It has LED indicator lights, but perhaps best of all, it doesn't have one of those frustrating tunable trip current adjustment knobs that you have to adjust over and over in hopes of getting the trip current set just right. There, I have connected the AR10 using the same wires that I used previously for the Digitrax AR1. Okay, let's try it out to see if it works. As you can see, there is no hesitation, and unlike the AR1, it makes absolutely no noise. Well, there you have it, the top five videos that I uploaded on this channel in 2020. Now, again, here's what I'd like you to do. Go down to the comments section and tell me which was your favorite video. And remember, I will put a link to my videos page down below. There you will find all of the videos I uploaded during 2020. You can go there to look for your favorite video if it isn't one of the top five performers. You are helping me upload similar videos in 2021. Now then, I'd like to thank all of you for coming along with me during 2020. Stay with me for the year ahead because I think that 2021 will be even better and more fun. Thanks for being here today. I'm Roy Smith. Until next time, happy railroading.